The next topic is psychrometric applications. In this topic, we will see the application of ideal case mixture. So the remainder of this presentation centers on systems involving moist air, uh, but a condensed water phase may also be present in such systems. The term moist air here refers to a mixture of dry air and water vapor in which the dry air is uh, treated as a pure component. So we can use uh, the Dalton model in the moist air system. So we identify case one will be the dry air and then case two will be the water vapor. So this is a binary mixture. And we can use table 12.2. So you can review it in the previous slide. So to give a moist air properties relations on a mass basis and the study of systems involving moist air is known as psychrometric. This is table 12.2. So I just copy again in this slide just to give you a uh, refresh on what is inside table 12.2. So this is a, for a binary ideal gas mixture. So we have two gas components. So gas one and gas two, you can see there the subscript one is for gas one, subscript two for gas two. So we have M1, so small m here is the mass and then M capital as the molecular weight. And then because this is ideal gas, so we can use ideal gas equation of state. So equation A here. And then uh, this is the average molecular weight. And then this is uh, the formula to get the mole fraction. So the ratio of the corresponding mole to the total number of mole of the binary mixture. And this is the formula for getting mixture enthalpy, mixture internal energy, specific heat, until at the end here we have the formula for mixture entropy. Let's take a look in more detail about this moist air mixture. So moist air mixture, in this case, is treated as a binary mixture consisting of dry air and water vapor. So in the TV diagram of this water, for example, we have a state of the water vapor at point, let's say I put here is point one. So at point one, the water vapor temperature is the mixture temperature, which is T here, and it has the pressure of partial pressure, PV. Okay, so at point one, water vapor has temperature of T and pressure of PV. So this is a typical state of the water vapor in moist air, point number one. Next one, when the partial pressure of the water vapor, PV, correspond to the saturation pressure of water at the mixture temperature, and in this case called PG, then the moist air mixture is said to be saturated so pg here so it's mean when the partial when pv equals to pg at the mixture temperature so it's mean it is at this point let's say it is 0.2 so at this point two, the moist air mixture is said to be saturated so saturated air is a mixture of dry air and saturated water vapor, point two here. The next topic is relative humidity. This term sounds familiar to us, so especially when we are watching weather forecast in TV or using internet to know whether today will be rain or not. Usually you can see the temperature and then the chance for rain and the relative humidity. The relative humidity is defined as the ratio of PV and PG, and it is represented by the Greek letter here, phi. 
So phi equals to P phi over P G at a certain mixture, pressure, and temperature. So T and P. So equation 12.44. Relative humidity is usually expressed as a percent. So therefore, in TV or in radio, you hear 70%, 60%, 80%, and so on. So the relative humidity ranges from a zero for dry air, so it means no water vapor at all, so PV equals to zero, then PV over PG equal to zero as well, up to 100% for the saturated air. So in this saturated air, PV equal to PG. In San Antonio, usually the relative humidity is in the middle range compared to the other area. So in north area, usually it's uh, more dry, so it has less relative humidity. And then in the other country where they only have two season, dry and wet season, usually the relative humidity is pretty high. For example, like in the Southeast Asia country, the relative humidity range is maybe between 80% to 90 something percent in the evening or in the early morning. The next parameter to represent the properties of moist air is humidity ratio. The humidity ratio represented by omega of a moist air sample is the ratio of the mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air, equation 12.42. MV is the water vapor mass, while MA is the dry air mass. So usually, MV is much smaller than MA, therefore the value of omega is typically much below 1. And then we can convert uh, this equation 12.42 to other form. In this case, we can use the ideal case equation of state and the relationship that uh, PA, so this is partial pressure of dry air, PA equals to P minus PV, so P is the moist air mixture. We can convert equation 12.42 to get equation 12.43. So in this case, uh, we replace M, the mass here, by the multiplication of molecular weight times the mole number. The mole number is replaced by equation of state. So in this case, N is replaced by PV over RT. R with the over bar here, it's meaning this is universal gas constant. So we can simplify the term to be like this one. So M capital times P phi divided by m capital here is belong to a time pa and then we know that uh, pa is p minus p phi and then m phi here is the molecular width of water vapor so this is 18.02 and then ma is the dry air molecular weight this is 28.97 so you will get equation 12.43 so omega here is the function of the partial pressure of water vapor. This picture is showing the schematic of the sensor to measure the temperature of the moist air as well as the relative humidity. So it works based on the capacitance and resistance type of sensor to sense these two parameters, so temperature and relative humidity. The next one is the mixture enthalpy of the moist air. Value of U, H, and S for moist air can be found by adding contribution of each component. Once again, because we assume that the moist air is a kind of ideal gas mixture, in this case a binary mixture, then the enthalpy, internal energy, and entropy is the sum of each component contribution. For example, uh, the enthalpy H, capital H, here H equal to HA plus HV is coming from the dry air and their V is coming from the water vapor. And then we can replace H capital here as the multiplication between mass and 
specific enthalpy equation 12.45 and this equation 12.45 is the same or similar to equation d in table 12.2 you can check it and then dividing by ma and introducing omega omega here is the humidity ratio the mixture enthalpy per unit of unit mass of dry air is formulated by equation 12.46 so in this case we have h capital over ma equals to h a small h it means this is specific enthalpy of dry air plus omega time hv so omega is the humidity ratio so this equals to m v over over m a for moist air the enthalpy HV is uh, very closely given by the saturated vapor value corresponding to the given temperature. So in the problem, we can estimate HV here as HG at the mixture temperature, equation 12.47. This is uh, an important equation. So once again, if we need to get HV, then just go to table a2 so this is temperature table at saturation condition for water and get hg in many situations we will find out a system consisting of a mixture of dry air and water vapor and having a contact with a liquid or solid water phase the feature on the right side here is showing a system on the top uh, side here it it is a gas phase so it's a binary mixture of dry air and water vapor which is the moist air and it is in contact with the liquid water at the bottom side here so when we have this system we can still assume that the dry air and water vapor behaves as an independent ideal gas and they are in equilibrium with uh, liquid water and in this case we can also state that the partial pressure of the water vapor equals to the saturated pressure at the mixture temperature so pv equal to pg at mixture temperature the next one is dew point temperature this parameter is the outcome of the moist air cooling okay uh, let's start when a moist air is cool partial condensation of the water vapor initially present can occur and you can see this uh, phenomena uh, in the condensation of vapor on window panes and then pipes carrying cold water and formation of dew on grass so and then an important special case here is cooling of moist air at constant mixture pressure p so we have two features at the bottom side here on the right side is showing the schematic of the system consisting of the moist air and inside moist air we have dry air and superheated vapor so this is the initial condition and then we will cool this uh, mixture and we will see what happens after we cool this mixture and then uh, the dash line here represent the system boundary and then on the left side we have the tv diagram and this is for the water vapor and the initial point of our initial condition of this uh, moist air is that the water vapor is at superheated condition so we have a blue dot here on the right side of the dome so it means the phase of the water vapor is vapor which is superheated and the temperature is t so this is the mixture temperature so i can put a line here so this is the t so this is the mixture temperature and then the pressure of the water vapor is the partial pressure which is pv so in this case pv is smaller than pg so pg is the saturated pressure at mixture temperature so once again we have a state one 
represented by the blue dot here and the water vapor is superheated. Next one, let's cool this moist air at constant mixture pressure. So because the molar fraction of water vapor is constant or uh, stay the same, so this means that PV, the partial pressure of the water vapor, remains the same as well. So as you know, PV equals to YV times P. So the YV is the mole fraction of the water vapor and then P is the mixture uh, pressure. Both are constant. So in this case, if you look at on the TV diagram, uh, the step from point one here is following the constant pressure line at PV and then at some point it will arrive at point D. Uh, this point D is right at the dome line, this one. Okay, and the water, so here the water cools at constant PV from state one to state D and point D or state D here is called dew point and the temperature at this state D is called dew point temperature, okay? And then if we further cool this moist air, some of the water vapor will start condense and the rest will remain as a vapor. So if you look at the schematic on the right side, if we want to maintain the same uh, pressure during this uh, cooling process, so it's mean we need to reduce the volume of the mixture so you can imagine that the piston will move down to maintain constant pressure condition at final temperature the system consists of dry air initially present so the amount of dry air stay the same and then plus saturated water vapor and saturated liquid so once again, this is the condition when we uh, further cools the moist air uh, below the dew temperature. And then since some of the water vapor initially present has condensed, the partial pressure of the water vapor at final stage PG2, so in this case, I can put this one, this is uh, PG2, okay, is less than the partial pressure initially which is pv it makes sense because the partial pressure is uh, controlled by the mole fraction of the water vapor some of the water vapors already condensed so we have less water vapor thus the partial pressure uh, reaches as well so therefore here pg2 is lower than pv1 and then the amount of water that condense so we call this one as mw uh, equals to the difference in the initial and final amount of water vapor. So this makes sense. So uh, MW, so this is the amount of uh, water that condense, uh, equals to MV1, so this is the initial mass of the water vapor, minus MV2, so this is the final amount of the water vapor. And then on the right side, you can see the schematic of the system now we start seeing start seeing the liquid at the bottom of the system okay and then uh, if you look at if you get back on this tv diagram so the water vapor condition is represented by the blue dot on the right side while the liquid water is represented by this point so it is saturated liquid and then using mv equal to omega time ma so omega is the humidity ratio and the fact that the amount of dry air remains constant so in this case the mass of dry air stay the same okay there is no conversion of the dry air okay therefore the mass stay the same so once again using this correlation and the fact that uh, ma is constant the amount of water condensed per units of 
mass of dry air is formulated as this equation. So mw over ma equals to omega 1 minus omega 2. So it means this is the difference between the initial humidity ratio and the final humidity ratio. And you have these two equations to represent the humidity ratio as a function as a function of the partial pressure and the mixture pressure. So on the left side, we have a PV1 as the partial pressure of the water vapor. Okay, and then on the right side, we have a PG2. So this is the partial pressure of the water vapor and this is the condition at uh, saturated. Okay. And P uh, denotes uh, the mixture pressure. And this remain uh, constant because we uh, do the cooling process at constant mixture pressure. Let's have a look on this example. So this showing example of the cooling moist air at constant pressure. So we have one pound sample of moist air and then initially at 70 degree Fahrenheit and then 14.7 pound force per square inch. So this one is one atmosphere and 70% relative humidity. V is 70%, okay, relative humidity. So this is the ratio between PV and PG at the mixture temperature. Uh, is cool to 40 degree Fahrenheit while keeping uh, the, const, uh, the pressure constant. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the initial humidity ratio? So omega. And then uh, the dew point temperature. And uh, the last question is the amount of water vapor that condensed in pound. Okay, on the left side is the schematic of the system. So the mass is given there, one pound, T170, and then V1 is 70%, and then T2, so the final temperature, is 40 degree uh, Fahrenheit. And on the right side is showing the schematic of the TV diagram. So the initial point is here. This is state number one. Uh, check my pen first. Okay, so this is state number one. So the initial point, so temperature is 70 degree Fahrenheit. And then mass is one pound. And then the humidity uh, oh, not humidity, the relative humidity is 70%. And then it is cooled at constant pressure and the final temperature is 40 degree Fahrenheit. So this is the final condition of the water vapor. So you can see there, there will be some uh, condensation of the water vapor. Okay, and this is the engineering model. So, uh, the sample of moist air is taken as the closed system, okay? No mesh transfer across the system boundary represented by the dash line in the schematic. And then the gas phase can be uh, treated as an ideal gas mixture. So we can apply the Dalton model. And then when a liquid water phase is present, the water vapor exists a saturated vapor at the system temperature and the liquid present is saturated liquid at the system temperature. So you can see in here, this is the condition for the uh, condensed water or for the condensate. Okay, uh, first is the initial humidity uh, ratio. This can be evaluated using equation 12.43, okay? And this required the partial pressure of the water vapor, uh, PV1. So this is the equation 12.43. So it's 0 0.622 uh, and then times a PV over P minus PV. Okay, so first we need to calculate PV and the relative humidity is given 70%. And the relative humidity is the ratio between uh, PV1 over P. So this is a given, this is also given, then we can get PV1. So you will get PV1 of 0 
pound force per square inch. And then once we uh, get this PV1, we can plug in the number to equation 12.43 to get omega 1. So you will get omega 1 of 0 0.011 pound water vapor per pound uh, dry air. And then go to the second question. The dew point temperature is the saturation temperature corresponding to the partial uh, pressure PV1. So we got PV1 of 0.2542. So you need to use table A2E. Okay, A2E because this is in British unit. And then you need to do an interpolation. What is the saturation temperature at this uh, pressure? Point 2542 and you will get a saturation temperature of 60 degree Fahrenheit so if you remember in the previous uh, TV diagram uh, this mixture is cooled down to 40 degree Fahrenheit so it is below 60 degrees therefore you will see some condensation of the water vapor okay go to question number three so the amount of condensate MW. This is uh, equals to the difference between the initial amount of water vapor, so MV1, and the final amount of water vapor, MV2. So we use this uh, formula. So MW equal to MV1 minus MV2. And then first we need to evaluate MV1. So we know that the mixture mass is one pound so this is consisting of dry air and water vapor so it's mean one pound here equals to ma plus mv1 and then uh, ma here is the mass of the dry air okay so we have this correlation that omega one equal to mv1 over ma and we already got m uh, omega 1 from uh, question a then we should be able to get mv1 okay so or here you have a correlation here and then you uh, replace ma by mv1 over omega 1 so you have this formula so one pound equal to mv1 times one over omega one plus one and omega one has been calculated uh, in question a with this formula you will get mv1 so mv1 here is 0 0.0109 pound and then uh, the mass of dry air present is then uh, 1 minus mv1 so you have 0.9891 okay so next we need to evaluate mv2 and then with the assumption that the partial pressure of the water vapor remaining in the system at the final state is the saturation pressure corresponding to temperature of the final one which is uh, 40 degree Fahrenheit so by using table A2E, you will get uh, the saturation pressure of 0.1217, okay? And then once you get this PG, you can calculate omega 2 because at the final state, PV2 equal to PG, okay? And then you use equation 12, 0.43 so 12.43 equation here is look like this one 0.622 times uh, p v uh, over p minus p v so it's depend whether it's state number one or state number two okay so at a final state uh, p v equal to p g okay and P stay the same, 14.7 pound force per square inch. So by plugging the PV that's equal to PG and then P as 14.7, you will get omega 2 of 0.0052 pound vapor per pound dry air. 
So we got omega 2, then we can calculate m phi 2 using this formula. Okay, because m a stay the same. So no change of the dry air mass. So we get uh, m phi 2 here is 0 0.0051 pound vapor. So we had m phi 1 and then we just got m phi 2 then we can calculate mw which is the difference between m phi 1 and m phi 2 so this is the amount of the condensate so 0.0058 pound next question looking at uh, moist air cooling at constant volume an air water vapor mixture is contained in a rigid closed vessel with a volume of 35 cubic meters, so it's big volume, at 1.5 bar, 120 degrees C, and relative humidity of 10%. The mixture is cooled at constant volume until its temperature is reduced to 22 degrees C. And the first question is, what is the dew point temperature corresponding to the initial state at in degree C? And then the temperature at which the condensation actually begins in degree C. And the last question is the amount of water condensed in kilogram. Let's take a look on the solution of this example. So on the left side is the schematic of the system. So this is a constant volume process. So it means we have a rigid tank here, the volume doesn't change, and then the boundary of the system is represented by the dash line. So the initial uh, condition of the moist air is given, 1.5 bar, 120 degrees C, and relative humidity of 10%. And then on the right side is the TV diagram, so state number one. So this is the superheated condition for the water vapor. And then it is cooled at constant volume. So it is connected by straight vertical line from state number two, uh, uh, sorry, from state number one to state number two. So it's going inside the dome. So it means there will be a condensation there. And if you can see here, there is a intersection between this process line and the dome line. So this is the point. So uh, they call this uh, one prime here. This is the point where condensation uh, begins. And I believe there is one question. What is the temperature uh, at which uh, condensation actually begins? So this is T1 prime. And on the right side here is the uh, engineering model. So this is a uh, closed volume. And so, uh, sorry, it is a closed system. Uh, volumes uh, remain the same and then the gas phase can be treated as ideal gas mixture so we can apply the Dalton model and then when a liquid water phase is uh, present the water vapor exists as a saturated vapor and then the liquid is a saturated liquid so it's mean at step 2 we have a uh, saturated liquid uh, with these properties and then we have also uh, vapor at this saturated vapor condition so we have F2 and G2 points the first question is the dew point temperature at initial state so this is the saturation temperature corresponding to the partial pressure PV1 and then in, in the initial state, the temperature is given and the relative humidity is also given. So the temperature is 120 degrees C. So by using table A2, we can get the saturation temperature at a uh, saturation pressure at 120 degrees C. And then multiplied it by the relative humidity, we will get PV1. So uh, open your table A2 and then go to, go to temperature 120 degrees C, you will get a PG of 1.985 and then multiplied by 0.1, so this 10% of the relative humidity, you will get PV1 of 0.1985 bars. And then by doing interpolation, 
uh, you will get the do temperature which is the saturation temperature at this PV1 of 60 degree C. So this is the temperature condens condensation would begin if the moist air were cooled at constant pressure. Okay, at constant pressure. And then the next one uh, is the question, what is the temperature uh, at which uh, condensation actually begins? So in this case, whether the water exists as a vapor only or as a liquid and vapor, it occupies the full volume. So this is the idea behind the Dalton model. So this means it remains the same. The volume remains the same. So accordingly, since the total mass of uh, the water present is also constant, the water undergoes the constant specific volume process illustrated on the accompanying TV diagram. So the TV diagram is so on the bottom right side here. So from state number one is going to state number two. It is connected by a straight uh, vertical line and uh, uh, horizontal axis here is V. So it's mean V1 equals to V2. Okay. And then in the process from state number one to state number one prime, so number one prime is the intersection between the process line and the dome line. The water exists as a vapor only. So because you see there uh, from point one to point one prime, it is on the right side of the dome. So it's made the superheated. So 100% uh, vapor. Okay. And then for the process from state one prime to state two, the water exists as a two-phase liquid vapor mixture. So it's going inside the dome. It makes sense there. Note that the pressure doesn't uh, remain constant during the cooling process from state one to state two. Yeah, because this is, uh, we try to maintain constant volume. So it means the pressure need to be adjusted. Okay. And then since state one on the TV diagram, uh, uh, sorry, state one, on the TV diagram here denotes the state where the water vapor first becomes saturated. Yeah, it makes sense. And then the saturation temperature at this state is uh, denotes by T prime. And this is the temperature at the beginning of the condensation. Okay. And uh, since state one is saturated vapor state, the temperature T prime can be found by interpolation uh, interpolation in table A2 with specific volume of the water at uh, this state. And you can see from this TV diagram that V1 equal to V1 prime equals to V2. So if we can calculate V1 prime from state number one, then we can use table A2 to get what is the temperature at that point, which is the saturation temperature. Okay, so we uh, calculate uh, phi one prime here from state one. So here we have phi phi one. So because this is for the water vapor, equals to R over bar. So this is universal gas constant over M phi molecular weight of water vapor times T one over P phi one. So we have T one. Uh, uh, 393 Kelvin. So this is 120 degree C. Uh, and then a molecular weight here is 18 water vapor. And then PV1 has been obtained from equation A. So we got uh, PV1 here of 9.145 cubic meter per kilogram. And then by using table A2, we can do an interpolation. So in this case, phi phi1 is phi g. Okay. So you go to the column of phi g, and then you need to do an interpolation to find out what is the corresponding temperature. And we got here 56 degrees C. So this is the temperature at which condensation actually begins. And then the next question is the amount of condensates equal to the difference between initial and final amount of water vapor present. It makes sense. So, and then we start uh, calculating the mass of water vapor at state one. So this is the initial state. So this is 
can this can be calculated from uh, fee so this is fee capital this is volume over fee fee one so this specific volume so the initial volume is the initial volume which is uh, constant throughout the process is given so 35 cubic meter and then fee fee one has been calculated so we can get m fee one of 3.8 27 kilogram okay and then uh, the mass of water vapor present finally can be determined from the quality okay we have state 2 here inside the dome and then uh, we also have a uh, fee 2 uh, fee fee 2 which is equal which equal to fee fee 1 okay and then uh, at final state uh, the temperature is given so that we can get what is uh, phi f2 and phi g2 okay and so by doing phi f2 phi g2 and phi phi2 we can get the quality of uh, vapor at state 2 okay using this formula okay so we got x2 here of 0.187 okay 0.187 then, uh, I think looking at the value here, uh, compared to the schematic, it doesn't represent well the schematic. So X2 is only, let's say 0.2, and you see here, uh, 0.2 is close to the vapor dome. So you can correct this schematic. Okay, we got X2 of 0.178, and then, uh, phi F2 and phi G2 here can be obtained from table A2 looking at temperature T2 of 22 degrees C. And then uh, once we got X2, we can calculate M phi 2. So this is just the multiplication of X2 times the total mass. Okay, times the total mass, which is 3.827. So this is the initial mass of the water vapor. So uh, we got M V1 and then M V2, then we should be able to get uh, the mass of the condensates M W2. This is 3.146 kilogram. The next example is to evaluate heat transfer for moist air cooling at constant volume. So in this case, we have a system consisting of uh, an air water vapor mixture. It is contained in a rigid a closed vessel with a volume of 35 cubic meters, same as the previous example, I believe, and pressure 1.5 bars, temperature 120 degrees C, and relative humidity of 10%. The mixture is cool until its temperature is reduced to 22 degrees C. The question is, what is the heat transfer during the process in kilojoule? The schematic of the system is the same as the one in the previous problem and this is uh, the engineering model so it's closed system and the volume remains the same and then the gas phase can be treated as an ideal gas mixture so that we can apply the Dalton model and then uh, we can ignore uh, the work and then the change of the kinetic and potential energies can be ignored as well and then uh, when a liquid water phase is present the water vapor exists as a saturated vapor and the liquid is as the saturated liquid and then uh, this is the conservation of energy formula so w equals to zero and then we have q equals to u2 minus u1 and the uh, mixture internal energy is the sum of the uh, internal energy of its component so u1 is equal to uh, this term coming from the dry air this is coming from the water vapor okay and then uh, we can uh, uh, replace uh, uv1 by ug1 and then uh, u2 is the same here as the contribution of the dry air and this one the contribution of the water vapor and this one is the contribution of the liquid water that exists yeah okay and then uh, we have this formula stay the same 
and this is uh, for the water vapor so the u phi here equals to the u g so saturated vapor and for the liquid uh, u w2 equals to u f2 so saturated liquid So in this equation, the subscript A, V, and W, okay, this represent dry air, water vapor, and liquid. And then the specific internal energy of the water vapor at initial state can be approximated as the saturated vapor, okay, so this is UG1. And then for the uh, water, uh, we can estimate uh, its uh, internal energy as the saturated uh, liquid or saturated yeah saturated liquid internal energy uf at t2 okay so we have this formula and then uh, we need to calculate the mass of dry air so in this case we can use uh, ideal gas equation of state okay so we have this formula so ma equals to PA1, so this is partial pressure of dry air, time volumes, so this is the system volume uh, over R uh, over MA time T1, okay, and then you will get uh, the mass of dry air of 40.389 kilogram, so, and then uh, you can use table A22 to get uh, the internal energy of air, and then table A2 to get U G and U F for the water vapor or for the liquid water. So you just plug in all the number, then you will get a Q here of minus 10.603 kilojoule. So minus here means that there is a heat transfer from the system, okay, going to the surrounding because this is the cooling process. Next topic is evaluating humidity ratio using uh, the adiabatic saturation temperature. So we have a schematic of the system on the left side. So a moist air coming from left and then entering the system. So the system boundary here is the dash line. And then inside the system, uh, there is a water at the bottom part here. So this also called a makeup water. So this is saturated liquid at saturation temperature TAS so because the moist air that enter is not saturated air there there will be a, an evaporation of this water and then at the exit the humidity ratio increases so in this case uh, omega prime is higher than omega and the amount of the makeup water here is the difference of the water vapor mass flow at the exit uh, and the water vapor mass flow at the inlet. And on the right side is the TV diagram. So this is the state of the incoming moist air. And then at the exit, it is assumed that uh, it will be a saturated uh, mixture. Therefore, it's go to this point. Okay. So there will be an increase of the water uh, vapor partial pressure and then by applying an, an energy and mass balance we can uh, get equation 12.48 okay so you can try it yourself so you apply the mass balance of dry air mass balance of the water vapor and then you apply the energy balance of the system assuming that uh, it is an, an adiabatic process so the heat transfer of the system going to the environment so this equals to zero then you will get equation 12.48 and omega prime here is formulated by equation 12.49 so in this case the partial pressure of the water vapor is a pg at a saturation temperature or tas Next topic is dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature. In engineering application involving moist air, two readily measured temperature are commonly used. The first one is dry bulb temperature and second one is wet bulb temperature. 
the dry bulb temperature, or this is represented by T D B, is simply the temperature measured by an ordinary thermometer placed in contact with moist air. So it's just the thermometer reading. So this is the dry bulb temperature. And then the wet bulb temperature, TWB, is the temperature measured by a thermometer whose bulb is enclosed by a weak moisten with water. And uh, the feature below is showing a schematic or an apparatus to measure these two temperatures, dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. So uh, this is uh, mounted on an instrument uh, called psychrometer. So in this system, the moist air is uh, sucked into the system by a battery operated fan. So through uh, this inlet, through this inlet, so moist air is sucked in into the system by a fan that is operated uh, using a battery, and this is the uh, moist air exit. And then we have uh, two uh, measurement tools here dry bulb and wet bulb thermometer. So this apparatus is called psychrometer. Owing to evaporation from the wet wick to moist air, the wet bulb temperature reading is less than the dry bulb temperature. So this evaporation, it's required a heat. So it is taken from the mixture, therefore the temperature will decrease. And uh, to do this phenomena, uh, the wet bulb temperature is lower than the dry bulb temperature. So each temperature is easily read from its respective thermometer with the psychrometer apparatus. Next topic is psychrometric charge. So graphical representations of moist air data are provided by psychrometric charge. And psychrometric charts uh, can be found in the appendix of the textbook, feature A9 and A9E. So first is uh, SI unit, second one is British unit. And these charts are constructed for a moist air mixture pressure of one atmosphere. So if we are working with the moist air uh, at around one atmosphere, we can use these two features. And several important features of the psychrometric charts are discussed in the following slide. And the feature at the bottom here is showing the schematic of uh, this chart. And we will look at individual parameter shown in this uh, psychrometric chart. The first parameter here is called dry bulb temperature or TDB. It is, it is the horizontal uh, axis of this psychrometric charge. Uh, for example, we have a moist air at a state uh, presented by a blue uh, dot here. Let's say the state number one. So if you want to know what is the dry bulb temperature at this state, you just uh, draw a straight uh, vertical line. It's going down here and this will be the dry bulb temperature of the moist air. So you can see that TDB. And then the next one is the humidity ratio omega. So this is the vertical axis of the psychrometric charge. And if you remember the formula of omega, this is equal to, I believe is 0.62 2 and then times uh, p uh, phi over uh, p minus p phi. So uh, p is one atmosphere. So you can see in here omega is a direct function of p phi. Therefore, you can see in this psychrometric charge beside omega, we also have p phi as the vertical axis of the psychrometric chart. For sure, they have its own uh, scaling number. So you can see in here for this uh, state, we have omega uh, and you just uh, draw a straight horizontal line going to the right to get what is the omega of this moist air at state represented by this blue dot. And then the next one is uh, relative humidity. 
so phi so this is the ratio of p phi over p g uh, in the psychrometric chart uh, we have a constant uh, phi line so we have a uh, 10 percent here and then here a 50 percent and this one is 100 percent so uh, by looking at this chart uh, this moist air has phi around uh, 50 percent so you can see there is around 50 percent and then uh, the next one is the dew point temperature tdp since the dew point is the state where moist air uh, be, becomes uh, saturated when cooled at constant pressure it's cool at constant pressure the dew point for a given state is determined from the chart by following a line of constant omega or constant p phi to the saturation line saturation lines here means that p phi equal to uh, pg so it's mean uh, phi equal to 100 percent so in this case you need to draw a straight horizontal line going to the left so that it intersect the phi line of 100 percent then you will be able to get what is tdp okay the next one is the mixture enthalpy it is also available in the psychrometric chart and this is the scale for the mixture enthalpy per unit of mass of dry air so this enthalpy is h a plus omega times h v okay and then uh this value is coming from uh H A that is calculated uh, from the C P time T and C P uh, C P A sorry C P A here is 1.005 uh, for the S I unit and then it is 0.24 BTU per pound Rankine for the British unit. So for the S I unit we use feature A 0.9. So I believe this is a typo. So this is not 12. So this is A. And then for the British unit, we use a uh, table or feature A.9E. Okay. And you can see here, it is the constant uh, line enthalpy. And for this state, you just draw a line uh, parallel to the constant enthalpy line to get uh, the reading of the mixture enthalpy it is at this value uh, next one is a wet bulb temperature so lines of constant wet bulb temperature are approximately lines of constant mixture enthalpy okay approximately so line uh, lines of constant mixture enthalpy so and wet bulb and two point temperature scale are stay the same and when you remember if we have a saturated uh, condition uh, or two temperature so it is when uh, the relative humidity equals to 100 percent so this is the constant wet bulb uh, temperature which is approximately uh, a line of constant mixture enthalpy as well and then to get the wet bulb temperature for this moist air state you just draw a, a line in parallel with a constant uh, line for the wet bulb temperature and then uh, in this psychrometric chart we can also get volume per unit mass of dry air so phi over m a okay so and uh, this is the line so let me redraw it with the purple so this is volume per unit mass of dry air lines giving phi over m a can be interpreted as the volume of dry air 
or the volume of water vapor uh, each per unit mass of dry air because in keeping with Dalton model each component is considered to fill the entire volume okay, okay so this is the value okay uh, let's take a look at this simple example using a feature a9 showing at the bottom of this slide determine the relative humidity ratio and mixture enthalpy in kilojoule per kilogram uh, dry air corresponding to the dry pulp and wet pulp temperature of 30 degrees C and 25 degrees C respectively. So it is pretty simple to estimate uh, the value based on the given wet pulp and dry pulp temperature. Okay, we have this psychrometric charge and then uh, the dry pulp temperature is given 30 degrees C and then the wet pulp temperature is 25 degrees C that is the uh, wet pulp temperature line at 25 degrees C and you can see this two line uh, crossing at a certain point here so let me put maybe a uh, black here and then see there you can estimate uh, the relative humidity 67 percent and then next one we can uh, estimate the humidity ratio so 0 0.0181 kilogram water per kilogram dry air and then we can also get the mixture enthalpy of 76 kilojoule per kilogram dry air 